I know you mentioned shift work and you gave that example of of doctors and I think I remember reading in um, Matthew Walker's book years ago, I think you'd be familiar with Matthew Walker, um, that he mentioned about shift work and doctors and he would almost want to demand to know how much sleep his surgeon had had the night before or what their sleeping pattern had been like. Um, and when I mentioned you were coming on the show and I asked uh, our audience for questions, almost all of them were, how can I build a perfect or better marriage between shift work and a healthy sleep pattern. If that is my job, I can't really do much about that situation right now. What would you advise those people think, to make the best? I think you make you make a, a really important point. Um, and it would be naive to say our 24 seven society can be put back in its bottle and, and you know, it, that genie's out. Um, and so what we've got to do is, is think of ways of mitigating some of the problems. Um, and so if we just think about it, um, if we know that there's a greater risk of having a car accident on the drive home, and it's, and it is highly significant, um, then what we should be using and, and maybe employers should supply are these apps, which can be, you know, you can put onto your phone, you clip it onto the dashboard, it can tell whether the car is moving or whether you're showing head nods. So it alerts you. That you're falling asleep. Um, sufficiently bright light in the workplace, which increases levels of alertness. Um, so that's that's really important. But I think one really important issue is that employers have a duty of care, and knowing that their night shift workers are more vulnerable to these serious illnesses, they should have higher frequency health checks. We all know that if you detect cancer early then you're gonna have a much better chance of curing it. So what we wanna do is, is detect cancer, coronary heart disease, metabolic abnormalities, such as diabetes too, before they become chronic. And, and it's an important issue here because the longer you do night shift work, the greater the vulnerability to these, these problems. And so it might be sensible to have, I don't know, five years of night shift work and then be able to rotate to day, day shift work. So, so you can unwind some of the potential problems. And I should say, well, why do we, why do people get ill after, after doing long-term night shift work? And that's of course, because the, the body clock does not adapt to the demands of working at night. And we can discuss why shortly. And so what happens is that the, 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 the what we have to do is override this entire biology saying you should be asleep. And the way we do that is to activate the stress axis. And of course, uh, short-term activation of the stress axis is good. It's a bit like, you know, going into first gear in a car. It gives you that acceleration. It can be really useful. But if you leave the engine in first gear, you're gonna wreck the engine. And, and it's a bit like that with our biology. Um, and, and so I think that's, it's, it's really important to have that understanding of what's going, of what's going wrong. Okay. So um, knowing that there's higher rates of obesity, diabetes too, metabolic abnormalities, um, why not provide the appropriate nutrition for night shift workers? What's available? High fat, high sugar, about as bad as it can get. So it, you know, what, what employers should be doing is providing or making the option available of protein, protein rich, easy to digest uh, foods. Um, I think there's often a complete failure to appreciate the consequences of night shift work, not only on the individual, but also the broader family unit. And so providing the appropriate education so that people know what's going on. And, and you know, the divorce rate, for example, in some sectors of night shift work is six times greater than day shift workers. So it's not just for the individual, but it's for, for, for the broader family. Uh, you know, why is your per partner turned into this, this kind of monster that, without a sense of humor, without empathy, or with irritab you know, irritability, increased anger, um, the failure to, to appreciate consequences of actions. It's not because they've turned into a monster. It's one of the consequences of doing night shift work. And, uh, and you know, and couples need to sort of kind of appreciate this. Um, the other thing um, I think is, there's variable ability to cope with night shift work. And so there's, you know, across society, morning types, intermediate types, 
an evening type, sort of larks and owls. And so it's relatively easy to do. It might be smart to chronotype our night shift workers and, and, and make sure that the late types are on the late shift rather than putting the late types on the morning shift, which would be really bad, or indeed the morning types on the late shift. So for obvious reasons, for economic reasons, and we live in a 24 seven society, we're not, we're not gonna get rid of it. Um, what we can do is mitigate some of the problems. And I think it's very important for both the employer, but also, uh, but also the employee to think about ways in which they can mitigate. Um, and as I say, the employer has a duty of care. So I would expect all industries, all, all employers should, should, should think about what they could do to make the situation better. Um, there's no one standard shift work pattern that works across the, the spectrum. I mean, that doesn't work. I mean, it's, it's whether you do rotating, advancing, delaying, it works for some better than others and we're all very different. Um, so that is not the answer. I think it's to appreciate there's going to be problems and how can we mitigate those problems. But my, my, I think my feeling would be, OK, do it for a few years. And if you possibly can cycle out of it and then maybe cycle back in later on.